ask this for in the future, but just to kind of keep us on our toes. How many Thanksgivings have you lived thus far? How many? You remember Thanksgiving when you were young? My daughter, Lori, what's Lori at? She's watching the kids. Her, her favorite holidays. Thanksgiving. You know, and you know, whether it be Christmas or this conversation, of course, was it upon us. Thanksgiving. I remember how excited I was because I just, it's all about the food, right? Because it was all about me. <laughs> now I gotta be careful not to fall over that trap now. <laughs> you know, but it just seemed like it took forever for the next Thanksgiving to come around. Or is it just me? And then the older I get, it's like, was it Thanksgiving last week? <laughs> yeah, you see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I, I, there was times, and, and again, I shared this before because I'm not a lot of people out here that may not have heard, you know, or looked at our archives or whatever, and again, it's always keeping us on our toes, but, you know, I would go to the old folks home and, you know, visit, you know, some friends and stuff there. I'm just going in and just, uh, just talking with some people and sharing Christ with them. And I still remember the, I don't even remember which home it was. I still remember this elderly lady when I would walk in. Every time I would come, and I bet you I went to this place at least a half dozen times during the visits with this one individual I was seeing. And every time I went, no matter what time of day, this lady was in the same chair, in the same position, looking out the same window. I could be there for two hours and I would leave and she's in the same chair, same position, looking out the same window. And it finally hit me one day, how in the world can she do that? Because to her, the days was like 15 minutes. The older we would get, the quicker things go by. And if you're sitting here right now, and you're looking around in our galvanized culture with the politics and the, the evil versus good, it's so blatant in our face now, we see it. Christian, and I'm talking to you, Chris. I'm talking to the person right now, because I don't know your hearts. I can guess. You know, other fruits, right? Christian, we need to step up our game. I'm talking to me, too. It's like, you know what? Tell that you can't out-pray God. If you can't out-pray God, then you can't out-serve God. And then, if you can't out-serve God, you can't out-talk Him. Now, my wife would argue that. I could probably out-talk Him, but... <laughs> but you know what? We need to step our game up because this is it. This is our time. This is our time. This is your time. Think an individual. This is your time. Teenagers, this is your time. This is your time. I wish I had pastors talk to me from the pulpit. This is your time. Recognize it. Recognize it now in your younger ages than most of us. Short. It's very short. Many times I've heard Thanksgiving messages and there's a million out there. Attitude of gratitude, right? <laughs> you can find a million attitude of gratitude sermons. And I'm like, God, I just, you got to give me something. I'm like, you got to give me something different because I want the Holy Spirit to just, I want us to get so much that we're just continuing to let the Holy Spirit do what he does and we're just growing as individuals. We're getting on fire more and you know, and we're just charging. Amen? Because there's a difference. There's a difference between having an attitude of gratitude, which is polite, and it's, it's, it's having a way of life that is grateful. That's the difference. Having a way of life that is grateful is very different than having an attitude of gratitude. To really graduate... From the kiddie table to really graduate from the kiddie table. I mean, do you really want to sit? Do you really want to sit in this chair your whole life? Do you? I mean, do, you do you really want to sit in that chair your whole life? I, I don't. I want to be this kind of Christian who only thanks God when he's serving me and blessing me. And everything is the way I want it. I don't want to be that kind of Christian. It's just recognizing that. You know, what's, what's wrong with this picture? It's Joe. Yep. 
demanding, ungrateful, all about me, a grum. Do I look right sitting in that chair? No, you don't have a cell phone. Doesn't look right, because it's not. Ungrateful, unthankful, demanding, banging, pounding, focusing. <laughs> focusing on the whole. We're here sitting, focusing on the whole in the donuts. We should always thank God for his provisions, amen? Always thank God for his provisions. But as we continue to thank him for his provisions, we need to focus on graduating in thankfulness. And that's what the Holy Spirit wanted us to get today. How to graduate in thankfulness. What does that even look like? Is it even in the Bible? It sure is in the Bible. I love God's word. Do you love God's word? Amen. Man, I mean, are you so hungry that you can't help but just get into it and just get so much more and, you know, and then you turn on the radio, whether it be 101.5 Word FM or whether it be K-Love, you're getting some music, you're getting, you know, and in between. I love those DJs in between on K-Love. Man, they give good words, don't they? They give good words and they have testimonies. Come on, man, it just blesses me. Blesses me. But we do have teachings in God's Word. How to graduate in thankfulness. We have David. Remember David and Goliath? Remember that story? King David? David of the Bible taught us a lot about graduated thankfulness. He was raised up a humble shepherd boy to be anointed king. Remember? David had this ability to remember where he came from, and it always made him thankful and grateful, even though his life was extremely dysfunctional, wasn't it? I don't know what's happening. It's not, you heard, this, heard in the song, you know? We're all dysfunctional, you know? You tell me what your normal is, and it's not mine. Amen. <laughs> your normal's not my normal. You know, David's life was dysfunctional, but was always driven by his heart and returning to God who had given all the blessings to him. David was a man after God's own heart. Even though he murdered Uriah. Even though he had an affair. I mean, David was a sinner. But yet the Bible calls him the God. But it was, he was a man after God's own heart. I mean, how many people that I've spoke to, and you might be one of them, you know, that even think this is, you know, how could God love me? You know, I, I'm a sinner. I've done this or I've done that. He doesn't care. He covered that with his blood. The second you say, well, how could God love me? That's the second you're acknowledging that his blood wasn't perfect. His blood was perfect. He covered all that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He covered all that. David understood that. David gives us a much deeper Understanding of mature gratitude. It's not a mature gratitude to thank God for what he's given you. That's just manners, right? That's just manners. That's just politeness. And David comes along and teaches us how to move from what? The kitty table? <sighs> to the banquet table. David comes along and teaches us that there is a difference. That there is a difference. And in contrast, it's interesting. Because when we saw Moses in the Old Testament, what was he teaching the people? Basics. Right? He was teaching the people how to be thankful at the kiddie table for provisions. And that was okay because that's a good starting place. Amen? It's a good starting place. But we see David teaching us to graduate our thankfulness at the banquet table. Moses taught things to the, to the people like, you. when God blesses you, remember him. He, he taught them when God blesses you, obey him. He taught them when God keeps his covenant with you, keep his commandments and things will go well. Those were basic things 
that Moses was teaching. And David comes along and, and he goes much deeper, much deeper. David comes along. And here's what I love about the Holy Spirit. He takes these verses that every one of us are so what we think intimately familiar with. Living and breathing. Do you think you're familiar intimately with every verse in this Bible? The Holy Spirit says, guess what? I got some more to teach you. Amen? Amen. You ready? Psalms 23. The Lord is my who? Who wrote Psalms? Most of them? David, listen up. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I lack nothing. We can stop there and be praying on our knees and weeping with that one verse. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Period. There's nothing else that I need. There's nothing else that I desire. I recognize that there may be rough times in my life, but with the Lord as my shepherd, I am filled and overflowing. How could I want anything else? How could you want anything else that the world has to offer? How? Look at verse 2. Oh, I love this. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Now, some of you may remember, because I used this example a couple times, but boy, this, we're going to flip it over here. It's how the Holy Spirit works. Because remember in Exodus, it's so cool. We've got David and Moses here. You can learn from them. Learn from God's Word. Remember in Exodus, the story about Moses? Remember the plagues? Remember this story? You know, and we read a few times. That God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Remember that? Don't you step back a little bit and say, well, why would God do that? God is God. That's not right. I, that's what I did when I first saw this as a young Christian. Once you understand scripture in context and understand God's character, what it is actually meant, and I shared this before, but you'll see where I'm going with it. Stay with me. What is actually meant was that the thought of God in Pharaoh's mind made Pharaoh even better. Man, remember Pharaoh got belligerent. And so, yes, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. The thought of God. It's exactly what that means. Now, watch this. Cuz, same thing here in Psalms 23 2, but the opposite. Cuz we see God. Soften the heart. He makes me lie down in green pastures. The thought of God should comfort you. Should soften your our true thankfulness to God gives us real peace. Not fake peace. Amen? Amen. Real peace. Just knowing the one true God as your Savior and knowing that He is your shepherd and there's nothing else that you desire, need, or want. Just Him. All you want is Him. Are you there? Are you there? The thought of Him puts you at peace and gives you comfort and deep, deep, that other word for thankfulness, gratitude. Deep, deep Gratitude. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me to sigh quiet waters. Can't you just, just hear the sounds of the water and just picture yourself snuggling down in green pastures? Because you have this soft heart for God and He's comforting you. He's enveloping you as He's developing you. You can just hear that and just know that you know, our creator, our creator made all these things, but he made you too. And he gave this to us in Psalms 23. And then we see in Psalms 23, verse 3, he refreshes my soul. 
He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. So, have you heard these verses before? Have you heard these? We've heard these verses before, right? So here's where David puts teeth on mature gratitude. This takes us to the next level of praise. The next level of praise. We want to get to the next level of praise. Amen? Yeah. Man, we have, we have to. When you get to the next level of praise, you better be hungry for the next level of praise. Amen? Amen. Don't you dare think you've arrived. Man, if the second you think you've arrived, you open up the door for Satan to come in. You have? Yeah. Know that. Understand that. Recognize that. Because it's exactly what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to think that you've arrived. No, you, you know that you've arrived that when you thought you've arrived? You've arrived to arrogance. That's exactly where you arrived. And now you're opening up. The chink in your armor becomes so high lit. And that will be taken advantage of. And every one of us has chinks in our armor. Could be temptations, could be addictions, whatever it is. Could be wallowing in something from the past. So let's look. It's Psalms 23, verse 4. Oh, this is where it gets good. Man. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Remember, the rod or even a club for a shepherd, it was to beat off predators. The staff was a long stick, sometimes had a, a hook on the end of it to lead or pull back the sheep from danger. You run your staff, they comfort me. David wrote this in a valley. David wrote this in a valley of his life. And David knew that God cared for him. Please hear this. David knew that God cared for him and that God was aware of his personal trials. As a result, David feared no harm. Do you know that God's aware of your personal trials? How many times are we sitting there and we're just dealing with whatever? Whatever trial, whatever circumstance, whatever it's related to. And we don't recognize that God's aware of it if you're a child of his. Because watch this. We'll see Moses, as he was teaching us how to thank God, you know, Moses teaches us for the Right? For the. Thank you for the. That's what Moses was teaching. David teaches us. You listening? Better be waking up. David teaches us even though. Amen? Even though. That's what David's teaching us. David's teaching us a graduated form of gratitude to our Lord. We look at the kitty table, and, and, and this, is, this is the place to thank God for his provision. As I said, that's where it starts. But this is the place. Where we thank God even now. Even now. Even now. This is the place where all hell can break loose. You with me? Even though. But this is when you say, this is when you say, it is well with my soul. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, you have taught me to say, it is well, even though it is well. Even though my heart is broken, even though I've lost some people, whether it be through death or through relationships, even though even though whatever you're going through, it is well. 
Listen to me. This is where we thank God for what we can see. where we learn to trust God for what we cannot see. The whole. This is where, even though, even though, right there, this is where you graduate your thankfulness to that next level of praise. So are we going to thank God for our food and we're going to thank God for our finances. We're going to thank God for our spouse, our fiance. Or are we going to, listen to me, or are we going to thank God for when we lost our job? Hello? Amen. Are we going to thank God for when we have, where's the tempter at? For when we have one donut left in the pantry. Sorry, buddy. Are we going to thank God for our finances? Are we going to thank Him when we have? Even though, just feed the brother. <laughs> he has faith in what he cannot see. <laughs> no, that was not in the script. Because <laughs> that's how the Holy Spirit works. I love you, Brother Bob. Okay, so please, please, please hear this. The Holy Spirit wants to give you guys something that's going to grow you. It's going to make you so much more thankful. Not just today, not this, just this week, but you're going to be walking out here saying, Wow, did God move in me today? Where do you want to sit? Now that we have context to this sermon, where do you want to sit? Answer it honestly. I'm serious. Answer it honestly because if you're not a child of the king, I'm going to tell you right now, you can't hear. I'm a public school. Yes, I can say ain't. If you're not a child of the king, if you have not asked the Lord into your heart, if you do not fear the Lord, if you... Do not know that the Lord died on the cross for your sins and accepted Him and have given your life to Him. You're still kind of sort of here. Amen. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And not just thank you. God for his provision. Listen. Praise God. You're thanking God for his presence. You're thanking God for his presence. Amen. Christian, you're thanking God for his presence. Yeah. Amen. That's baby stuff. Yeah. This is God's presence. That's that graduated thankfulness that we must get to that carries over because now you're thanking him for his presence. And if you want to be a big boy and not a baby, you need to sit in his presence. Amen? You need to sit in his presence. And 
just we learned that the Holy Spirit made us more. Yes, Psalms 23, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Do you know this verse? All so well. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The kitty table, good starting place. Amen? Good starting place to thank God. Church, can you be away with that? 
I still got to go to work. Man. We can sit down at this table and have a mature thankfulness towards our Lord and just focus on Him and enjoy, I don't know, enjoy His presence. And our enemies, when we're enjoying God's presence at this next level of thankfulness, guess what, guys? Our enemies are powerless. Yes, amen. amen. They're powerless. Because we will not, we won't, we will never cleanse away. Go ahead and cleanse away and watch what happens. Go ahead and cleanse away, teenagers. Yes, I still remember you today. That's how I remember. Our Lord is all we need. Let's take our thankfulness to the next level on this journey, church. I don't care if you're a member of this church. I don't care if you're visiting. If you know the Lord is your Savior, let's take our thankfulness to this next level. In His presence, get, get away from there. Whoa! Get away from the kitty table. Because like David, you will be so excited, so empowered, so comforted. And let's just wrap this up. We started it all with a pastor circle, kitty lesson at the beginning. See the adjectives? Colossians 4.2. How does this read differently? Continue in prayer. Be vigilant in Thanksgiving. It's not what it says. Continue earnestly in prayer. Be vigilant. Hello? That's vigilance. That's vigilance. Please don't be mistaken. This isn't even close to vigilance. This is where the earnest prayer starts. Amen? But the earnest prayer grows to vigilance. That's where we will have that mature thanksgiving that David clearly teaches us. Because, man, When we see the hole in the donut as the enemy, we completely miss the blessing of the munchkins. <laughs> Should have been a title of the sermon, huh? The blessing of the munchkins. <laughs> we do! Right, Tempter? You miss the blessing of the munchkins because you were not thankful for the whole. Amen. And that's what we do. <laughs> Knowing that this walk of an intimate relationship with Christ was ever only meant I'm ending here. This journey was only meant for a table for two. Okay? It was only meant for a table of two. Not a table of you. Because God created every one of us for a purpose. A table for two. Do not be mistaken. Because you don't want to focus on the whole. H O L E. I want to focus on W H O L E. Completeness. Let's stand this morning. Just letting the Holy Spirit move within our hearts. And being so hungry, and some of you talked to me this morning, you're like, 
You said you were just so excited to see what God had for you today. And I knew why. Because you were just hungry for God's word, seeking something. And this was it. This was it. This graduated level of thanksgiving. So when you're sitting at your Thanksgiving tables on Thursday, or Friday, some of you celebrate different days, but it's about Thanksgiving, it's about God, it's all about God. And you're sitting there with your families, arguing over grief or whatever. Please remember what God gave you today. What he gave you, because I didn't give you this, trust me, it was all. I, I'm not that smart. I'm not. I'm, I'm, the tenth or second time. I'm not. God's just so good. And this is just, again, one of those other sermons. There's been so many of them. This was one where I just wept as the Holy Spirit was giving me stuff. And I want you guys to know that the Holy Spirit was working hard this morning because the computer literally... Jam blew up, froze up 20 minutes before 10. The same computer that we're using right now. That's Brother George and Brother Henry. And these guys could hack the Pentagon. <laughs> yes, you can, Brother Slug. The Holy Spirit wanted every single one of us to understand this next level of gratitude. Being thankful for every single thing. I had a video that I was going to play instead of the family one, but that family one has become a real tradition with our Thanksgiving services. But there was another one where a guy's sitting on the edge of his bed. Before he goes to bed, he's sitting there and he says, God, show me what to be thankful for. He lays down, he goes to sleep. Night goes by real quick. It's a video. Alarm goes off, he wakes up his eyes. And then there's words that go across the bottom of the screen. Be thankful you can see. And he's just waking up, and he stands up. says, be thankful you can stand. He starts walking to the bathroom. says, be thankful you can walk. He starts brushing his teeth. Be thankful you can move your arms. He goes out and starts his car. And I'm, I'm taking a lot of this out. Be thankful you have a car. Be thankful you have all these words going across the bottom. As he's going through his daily routine. And then you know what he does? You know, everybody, you know where I'm going with this. That night, sits down on the edge of his bed, says, God, tell me what to be thankful for. Yeah. That's a lot of us. Guilty as charged. Let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes. I'm going to open up the front this morning. If there's anybody here this morning that you have not accepted the Lord as your Savior, please come up. Now is the time. Life is short. You know this. Don't gamble. Don't gamble with roads. Don't gamble with your next breath. <laughs> and it's so simple. You're just acknowledging that the Lord... Jesus died on the cross for your sins. You're acknowledging rose from the dead. You're acknowledging you're a sinner. You know how many people don't acknowledge you're a sinner until the Lord finally opens their eyes? Man, you're acknowledging you're a sinner, and then you're saying, God, take my life. I want to give my life to you. That's what it means by being saved, because you're being saved from eternal damnation, and now you're giving your life to the Lord and saying, God, take me. The rest of this James 4.14 life is but a vapor. It's only here for a moment and then it vanishes away. Because quite honestly, I'm screwing up my life myself. I need my Lord. I need my Lord. Every single one of you needs your Lord. You need to give your life to him. So please, if you need to ask the Lord your heart, come up here and we will pray and we will we, we will let the Holy Spirit do what he does. I had a couple in our office on Saturday. And 
We were just talking, waiting for their appointments. The lady, she said that she has two sons, but the other one went on to be with the Lord. And I said, would you mind sharing that with me? She said, no. Her husband was there. She said, when he was 17 years old, he was just at home. She said, it wasn't a problem, child, or anything. Didn't have any health problems, no concerns. 17 years old. And the husband was actually home from work that day, and he normally wouldn't have been. The son was in the living room behind the husband, and Mike, the husband, he said he heard his son take a really weird breath and turned around, and that was his son's last breath. He had a massive heart attack. Please hear me. Please. I don't have stories like that all the time, most recently. But for whatever reason, God wanted me to share that with some of you or one of you. A 17-year-old boy, according to his mother, she said he knew the Lord. Asked the Lord to his heart, got saved. She knew that he was with the Lord. She will see him one day because she knows the Lord. But he was only 17. But she's comforted. Comforted by the rod and by the staff, by the still waters and the green pastures. She's comforted knowing that her son's with the Lord and she's going to be there someday soon, even though she mourns right now. Bow our heads, close our eyes. Just enjoy God's sweet presence as we close in prayer this morning here.